Hey guys, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through five recommended practices of potential ways to hide some of the key columns in your model. Now, most of the conversations around hiding columns in a model in Power BI kind of come through curating the report author experience, and especially if you build a data set that is going to be accessed by other people, and you want to curate that experience to make the model and the field list very easy to understand and use. So we're going to go ahead and review each one of these in turn. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So let's start with number one, which is hiding your relationship or key columns in Power BI. We have a few examples here with our fact table at the bottom and then all of our dimension tables here at the top. Now notice that each one of these has a relationship where there is order date and date, there is the product ID, color, and manufacturer. Now based on the design in here, let's discuss this one first. Now I do want to curate that this is hidden. So order date and date both have a connection. I have hidden order date, but because I will still use the date in a visual, potentially that stays unhidden. It also ensures that if we come up to the report, go over to the fields list and let's look for date. We can now see that the only ones visible are in my calendar table and as well in each of those hierarchies. So this is enforcing, even if I was to view the hidden, I'm making sure that this one is not showing up to reduce the chance of ambiguity. So that is an example where most of these key columns wanna be hidden so it curates the experience in here to enforce consumption and usage of very specific columns that I want without having to use any of the ones accidentally from a fact table. And as we saw, the calendar date is an exception where on the dimension table we keep it hidden, but the product table doesn't really have in my environment a need to have product ID on a visual. I would prefer instead to use category, subcategory, name, or description. So that's why on this table and in this example, it is also hidden on the product table instead of visible like on the calendar table. Example number two, hiding sort by columns. So in our example here, we have the month column, which is a formatted text value of months short. Now, by default, this will display alphabetically unless in our model, we've configured the sort by column option to sort it by a different column. And month number is a column that we might not necessarily want to display on a visual because it's just a number and it does not display nearly as well as potentially a month short would, so that stays hidden. Similarly, I have quarter year, which based off of this direction does not quite sort how I would want it to in terms of an alphabetical sorting, but if I was to tell it to sort by something like quarter year number, it will sort appropriately by this because this one numerically has the correct order that we would want it to go in to be able to sort this other column by. The third type of column I would recommend considering hiding would be your fields used for DAX measures. Now, when I say that, I prefer when I develop models to have only measures that are used for aggregation. So if I wanted to aggregate my sales amount column, I do not want to use this in a well on a visual. I would instead prefer the sales amount column to be hidden and then instead I'm using the measure for any of the visuals that require this calculation. Now, in addition to this, anytime we have a calculation which also would be used exclusively in a filter in a measure, you can still reference those filters as well directly inside of a measure. So as an example, if I was to use the calculate function and go ahead and pull in that sales amount column here, even though it's hidden, I can still access it from the measures. So there's a column that exists because you need to use that in some type of logic in a measure, but it's not going to be displayed in a visual. That would be another example of where you would go ahead and hide that, get it out of the report view, but it is still going to be accessible for any of the measures that you're writing as well. Reason number four, hiding hierarchy fields. Now let's look at two examples. The first example is my product table. I've actually hidden the original category, subcategory, and name columns. We can quickly observe that here. You hidden, there are the category, the product name, and the subcategory that have all been hidden. So I'm enforcing that if people want product information, they are going to use the hierarchy here. Now on the flip side of this, I have found that the calendar table often can be mixed and matched with a lot of different fields in here to display depending on what is prioritized and necessary for the visual. So I actually prefer to keep those core columns unhidden and also those hierarchies created. And to help accommodate for this, notice that I have folders for columns and hierarchies. I like this. I've seen Matt Allington do that a couple years back on one of his blogs. I thought it was a nice trick and I've since been organizing my fields that way. And just as a reminder, if you want to organize by groups, you can select them. You put the display folder name there. Same thing with the columns. All of these just have a display folder of columns. And last but not least, it's a similar conversation around the measure topic that we had as well. If there are any columns, such as in this case, year offset, 
which is just a number assigned to any of the rows for the years on the calendar table, which says if it's in current, prior, or future. And I have a filter on a particular visual that is using that, but this is something that is more designed for me as a developer for a very specific reporting scenario, and it might not be needed by other people connecting to and consuming this report. So this could be an example where I need it to be able to be used for some type of report design, but when other people connect to the report, I don't want them to see this. So that's why this is another example of something to potentially hide. Again, you have to know your audience though and curate it to that. But one last and final example of some other ways to further reduce the number of unique fields and curate that user experience. Overall though, you've seen five ways to potentially hide columns. Hopefully this is something that you guys have found useful. Let me know in the comments if you liked any of these. Also, if you have any other suggestions of types of columns or fields that you would wanna hide, go ahead and drop that into the information and comment section below. But otherwise, please go ahead and check out some of our videos that we have over here on the left that will have other recommended videos you can check out and watch. If you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Share this as desired, but otherwise I will see you all in my next video.